What's up guys, welcome to the channel. Now, I know I just did a video on the PSP and it was pretty much a comprehensive list of all the games that I own, but in today's video, I did want to talk about five of the games that I feel like are the best on the system, at least to me. Now, I know your list is probably going to be different from mine, so let me know in the comments down below what are your favorite games on the PSP. And it's not a top 10 because that's how I roll, just top five. But anyway, let's check out five of the games that I feel like are the best games on the PSP. Oh, and just a little side note for those of you that watch my channel, there's no shooters in this video. I know, right? Let's check out the games. Coming in at number five, we have Castlevania The Dracula X Chronicles. Now, for those of you that don't know, Castlevania The Dracula X Chronicles is a 3D, well, not 3D, it's like more like a 2.5D remake of Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Now, not only that, this also has a port of Castlevania Symphony of the Night and an original port of Castlevania Rondo of Blood that only came out on the PC Engine. Now, this is the only time that this has been ported over to English. Like, yeah, there's Dracula X on Super Nintendo, but to my knowledge, this is the only time that Rondo of Blood has actually been ported in English. And now I'm not talking about ROM hacks or none of that stuff. I'm talking about like an official release. It's actually on the disc. So it, you can't play it right away. It isn't unlockable. And that's one thing about North American video games. I've noticed that a lot of Japanese video games give you all the content right from the get-go. And I noticed that North American video games make you do a little bit of work to get to it. Me personally, I'd rec I like to experience it right when I buy it. But I understand the developers trying to give the game a lot of replay value. That way people don't burn through the game and feel like they were burnt for 50 bucks. But this game's pretty cheap. You should be able to find it at your local retro game store or online for right around the $20 price point. Uh, it's an amazing value for what it is. Uh, there's a ton of content in this game. Uh, if you're a Castlevania fan or a platforming fan, this is a must own on the system. And for you know retro game heads like me, this is a pretty fun game. And again, awesome value. At number four, we have Wild Arms XF. Wild Arms XF. Now, I typically don't go to strategy RPGs or tactical RPGs as my go-to RPGs. This game's a little bit different. Uh, in the past, I liked strategy RPGs like Vandal Hearts or Grow Lancer on the PS2 or Final Fantasy Tactics. You know, some of the PS1 uh, strategy RPGs are really, really good. This one's really, really good too. The story just hooks me. Uh, just the way that the characters look, the sprite work. Um, you know, everything about this game is just, it's, I like it. I like it a lot. For a strategy RPG, it's my go-to game on the PSP. Some of the more notable battle mechanics with Wild Arms XF, the first thing would be formation arts, and that's pretty much just surrounding your enemy to get off extra attacks or special attacks or more powerful attacks. And then you have, which isn't anything original, but there's something called the Originals, which, which is kind of weird that it's called that, but it's pretty much all your magic attacks. And it's kind of weird that this game uses a hexagonal grid to move around because there's another game on the PSP called Hexy's Force that you would swear by the name uses a hexagonal grid to kind of navigate around the, the map. But no, that's just a regular old turn-based RPG. Well, it's more than that. But And this game uses a hexagonal grid kind of like Dark Wizard, but I, I love it. I love the way that it's kind of got that minor cell shading, just a little touch of it. You know, I'm not a huge like cell shaded graphics guy. But, uh, you know, just a hint of it is pretty nice, and the graphics on this thing do look pretty good on the PSP. Although it's not the most graphically intense game on the system by a long shot, it is the most fun strategy RPG, or if you want to call it a tactical RPG, whatever you want to call it. I kind of group both of those genres together, uh, you know, just from my perspective. But this is a good one. Uh, it is one that I have seen shoot up in price as of recently, but it has come back down. I guess one of the bigger YouTubers must have talked about it on one of their videos because this went from being a $10 game to like a $75 game for a while. And I think the price is coming back down, but if you see it at your local retro game store, pick it up or download it. It's a lot of fun to play. Okay, at number three, we got Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast. Now, it might surprise you that this game is on my list. For those of you that watch my channel, I mainly only talk about shoot 'em up sometimes RPGs. I mean, those are just the games that my brain kind of latches itself to. But, if you also watch my channel, you'll know that I like arcade games, and this is a great arcade racer. And this is one of those games I can just sit and play, and not even need an objective, in the same way that I could just sit and play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Like, I don't need that two minute time limit to complete a run. I could just sit and play that game for hours on end and just do tricks and fall and get back up and just keep skating. And same thing with Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast, you know, even in Heart Attack mode, which Heart Attack mode is pretty interesting. So in Heart Attack mode, 
you pretty much drive with a woman, as is customary for the Outrun series, but the woman gives you objectives to do. It could be hit the cones, it could be uh, power slide, it could be drive without hitting anything, it could be drive on top of a certain color of road, you know, things like that. And if you don't do that, she gets upset and starts hitting you. And I don't know if that affects your the time limit that you get. I don't think that it does. It might. But, you know, usually if you're messing up, you're slowing down. And if you're slowing down, you're not going to complete a race or heart attack mode. But this game has a ton of replay value. There's a lot of cars to unlock. And sometimes you have to complete a lot of races to unlock some of those cars. And some of those cars, even though they cost a lot, they don't really give you a whole lot more as far as speed and performance and stuff. But anyway, this game is highly recommended on the PSP. I do believe a version of it came out on the original Xbox, or maybe it's the Xbox 360, but the PSP version, I got it for like 6 or $7 at my local retro game store maybe a few months ago. Never played it before in my life, but it's starting to become one of my favorite PSP games. A ton of fun. Highly recommended if you're a fan of arcade games, even if it doesn't matter what kind of arcade game, if you like that arcade goodness of getting, jumping right in and just playing without having to read a whole bunch of menus or text or dialogue, this is the game for you. Oh man, we're getting into the nitty gritty now. At number two, we have Valkyrie Profile Lenneth. Okay, so Valkyrie Profile Lenneth, where do I start with this game? Well, I guess I'll start off by saying this was one of my favorite RPGs on the PlayStation 1. Uh, this is the first RPG to turn me on to the mechanic of turn-based, timing-based. So if you've played games like uh, like the second Shadow Hearts game, or a Shadow Hearts game, I should say, or if you're a fan of games like Super Robot Ties and OG Saga Endless Frontier on the DS, which is my one of my favorite RPGs, I might add, then you're going to love the combat system in this game. It's turn-based, timing-based, not super in-depth, so you don't have to do a lot of thinking to, to run the battle system on this game, but this game is very addictive as far as the battle system goes anyway. It's got a good story. Now, there is quite a bit of dialogue in this game, at least in the beginning. Well, really throughout the whole game. <laughs> but in the beginning of the game, you probably go for about a half an hour without really getting into too many battles. But don't let that deter you. This is an awesome game. And the PlayStation 1 version, it's super expensive. What does it go for now? Like 100 whatever 200 i don't know what it goes for now i know it's at least a hundred dollars the psp version on the other hand just like uh, the castlevania game on the psp is pretty cheap i have seen it at quite a few retro stores in pennsylvania and maryland and it usually goes for right around twenty dollars as a matter of fact i've never seen it sold for any more than twenty dollars and it's just an awesome game and a great value and just like chrono trigger that was released on the ds with the added content see chrono trigger on the ds had the content of the PlayStation version, it also had the content of the SNES version, so you have the added cutscenes. Now, that's not unlike this game, so what this game does is it takes everything, cutscenes, gameplay, everything from the original PlayStation version from both discs, puts it all in the UMD, and then it adds added cutscenes. So, in my opinion, this would be the definitive way to play Valkyrie Profile, at least the original Valkyrie Profile. Awesome game, highly recommended. I don't want to say anything to kind of ruin the story or anything, but most of the games in the Valkyrie Profile series are pretty good. Um, they, all of them have kind of different gameplay mechanics, but man, you guys got to check this one out. And it's only $20. If you ever looked at the PlayStation version and said, God, I'll never earn that game, well, you can own the PSP version. Or hell, just play it through an emulator. Okay, at number one, we have Hexy's Force. Here we go, my favorite PSP game of all time, Hexy's Force. Now, I don't know whether it's my favorite game because the gameplay is excellent, the story is excellent, or because I have very fond memories playing this game on vacation with my family, but either way, this game is awesome. So, really what this game is, is it's two games in one. Or So basically, you have Cecilia and you have Levant. You have two different characters, and I'm going to try to describe this without ruining the story for any of you guys, because I want all of you to play this game. But the way that the game starts is you can choose your character, whether it's Cecilia, which is a female, or Levant, which is a male. I initially played the game with Cecilia. Um, I don't know whether you should play first with Levant or Cecilia. I played the, my first go around with Cecilia and I had an excellent time doing so. But you eventually, after you play the game for a while, you do cross paths with the other character that you could play as and eventually the paths branch together um, and that's with both games that you could play. Now the combat in this game is just your traditional turn-based RPG, but the twist with this game is, at least it was a twist for me, was like kind of like the crafting, or not crafting, but like the weapon system. 
not really weapon system, but you can kind of delegate which person uses which weapon, whereas in other games, certain weapons would be delegated to certain party members in your party. And in this game, you can kind of swap out weapons to any party member you want. Now, that's fine and dandy, but that becomes very, very difficult when you start entering the end of the game, especially the final boss. And you kind of have to figure out, well, you know, who should, because you can only have a certain amount of party members, but at least for the final boss, and I'm not really saying anything to give any spoilers or anything, but you kind of have to choose, and not even just with the final boss, but who's in your party, and which party member is going to use which weapon, and God, I remember at least for the end boss in this game, if you played this and beat it, I remember that my first go around with Cecilia, you know, I played and I died, man, I must have failed that, uh, that end boss mission like 10 times before I beat it because I had to figure out who to put in my party and then which party member to equip with which weapon. So it, this game has a ton of replay value. And again, I said I played this game when I was on vacation with my family. So, you know, I live in Baltimore or right outside of Baltimore. And, uh, you know, at the time I was actually living in East Baltimore, like kind of near the hood. And uh, we went on vacation, me and my girlfriend and, you know, our, uh, our son. And I just remember being in Ocean City with the family and, you know, I spent a lot of time with them. But like any moment we were in a hotel room or in a car ride, I just remember being consumed with the Hexes Force. And, you know, I'm not going to go into the story on this game but because I want you to play the game. But the story in this game is awesome. I don't know what it is. Everything about it. The graphics are good. The story is good. The gameplay is excellent. Uh, the turn-based RPG mechanics are just on point. Um, this game actually came out, and I believe it was 2009, and it was developed, I believe, by Sting, and then Atlas brought it over here. And we got it here in the United States in 2009. It might have came out in Japan earlier than that, or it could have came out the same year. Either way, I'm just happy that we did get it, because it is kind of a semi-late release on the PSP. And this game is kind of pricey at the time that I got it, and I've had it for years. I remember paying about $40 for this game, and at that time, and even today, you know, that is quite a that's, a, that's a piece of money for a PSP game. I mean, let's face it, most of these games are cheap. I mean, even Valkyrie Profile, which is excellent, goes for 20 You know, Hexy's Force, I believe, still commands a decent price today, and I do believe that is because there was a low print run on this game. But don't let that stop you. You know, play the game. It's not too bad, the price, and again, you know, if you don't want to pay the $40, just download it, throw it on an emulator. Okay guys, so those are my top five PSP games of all time. Now I know I've done videos on this in the past. This is my top five for right now. It's probably going to be for at least this year. Now what's your top five or what's your favorite games on the PSP? Let me know in the comments down below. And I do want to say, if you want to play any of these games and you don't own a PSP, all of these games can be emulated through RetroArch or uh, PPSSPP if you, want to, if you have an Android or I don't know if you can run that on iOS, maybe you can. Uh, I know Android, um, I run it off of a Galaxy S8. Uh, you can run it on a GPDXD. Um, that's another device I highly recommend um, if you have the money for them, they are kind of pricey now. But if you do own a PSP or a PSP Go, as a matter of fact, it's right here. It's right here. I was gonna try to show this in the last video I did kind of showcasing all the games I had on the PSP. Here's my PSP Go that I originally got at the flea market for 20 bucks with like, you know, all the wires and the thing you can hook it up to the TV with, like everything. And, uh, you know, it's crazy that like a couple years later, like what this thing goes for, like this. And I think it's because you can dock it. And I, I have the dock too. I actually have one brand new that I've never even opened. Uh, but you can actually dock this thing and then play with the PS3 controller. So I don't know if you see right here, this was the only PSP that had Bluetooth. Um, but anyway, if you want to know more about PSP modding, which is extremely easy, um, just to throw everything on a memory card as far as like the, uh, you know, to flash the OS and everything like that. There's a guy with a channel, uh, Modern Retro Gamer. Modern Vintage Gamer, that's it. Um, I'll link to one of his videos in the description that kind of tells you, you know, how you can pretty much play whatever you want on a PSP. If you already have one or you're looking to get into the hobby uh, and you want to get a PSP, all you really need is a memory card and a PC and you can pretty much play any game in the library uh, regardless of region on your PSP. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the support I've been getting lately. Um, you know, just thank you for watching and if you liked the video, then like the video and if you haven't subscribed yet and you like awesome video games, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Until next time guys, peace out.